Welcome back to the channel, Shooters. If you have been here before, thank you for coming back. If you have not, make sure you go down in the description below and find out ways to support me and support yourself. Support us and everything that we like to do. It's the best thing to do. Now, gonna be a little different. I am going to give you a Kestrel class. These things are absolutely phenomenal. There's a lot to them. Um, and it's twofold. So one, I'm gonna be traveling for a month. So I need to make sure that I get good videos out for you while I'm gone. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna cut it into four different pieces, uh, four different videos to make it more digestible. So it's not just like an hour and a half of going through this, okay? So make sure if this is something that you've been wanting to get into, there are other videos out there, but I'm gonna go really in depth on this and just basically run my mouth as I click through and you guys will be able to see on an overhead screen. So. And finally, part four of how to do a Kestrel and everything about it. Let's go ahead and get into it. <clears throat> Okay, so if you're watching this and you haven't seen the previous three videos, I suggest going back and watch the previous three videos. But if you don't want to do that, what I'm going to do for this is I'm going to go into my Kestrel and I'm going to show you guys the how I utilize this thing to be fast and efficient because a lot of times I'm managing guns, I'm managing shooters, I'm managing camera equipment and audio. I hate dealing with audio. And I also have to manage multiple different pieces of kit, whether it be um, range finding binos with applied ballistics or this or data arm board or different shooters dopes that I need to know for whatever they're engaging while also controlling different teams of shooters. Like it can be a lot sometimes. And being able to navigate your Kestrel really quickly and efficiently for what you need is awesome. So first thing, obviously I'm gonna turn this guy on, all right? Version 1.53. Um, in here is whatever last that I had for <laughs> the last video, um, since I'm filming all this at once. Spoilers, post-production. Um, now, the first thing that I'm gonna do is, like I mentioned in the previous video to this one, is I want my atmosphere so I'm gonna go to environment and I'm gonna leave it live and I'm gonna let it capture the atmosphere. I want my atmosphere to be current. So say in an hour, it's obviously a complete change in environment. I'm gonna update my atmosphere. What I'm doing right here, it's updating. Um, it's pretty much steady at 73 degrees. So I'm gonna lock it. All right, I just simply hit left or right to lock it. Now my environment's taken care of, okay? Now a lot of winds, Winds can be tricky. Winds can be really consistent or they can be really inconsistent. Let's go ahead and assume wind speed is consistent and my target direction is in front of me, okay? So I'm gonna get my um, wind direction. All right, I'm just gonna put something in here. So say, let's, uh, let's go 330 and I have a low, spe low speed of four mile an hour and a high speed of 10, okay? And my target direction is 10 degrees at 557 yards. Now I have that set. The 557 yards I can change, but I'm not gonna worry about it because I'm not gonna use that anyway. What I want is all that data put in there so that I can quickly get to the information through my range card. All that data is in there. The simple thing here now is I have this set to scroll in increments of 20 and page by page, not line by line. So now I can get all that same information here. So let's go to Actually, I'll put, just to show you, I'll put this at 600 yards. Give you a real quick, um, obviously no shit, no duh. Five, two, or excuse me, five, four, two, seven. So 4.3 with a 0.5 and a 1.5, all right? So I'm gonna, that was 600. I'll show you the range card at 600. Boom, that same thing. 4.3, always round up. Wind bracket five. Wind bracket two, 1.52. So I have all that environment and wind information in here. This is just giving me target distance. And it's in increments of 20. If I really wanted to, I can, if I'm really trying to be that precise or wind is really, really high, I can drop it down to 10 or five yard increments. But typically for what I'm doing, 20 is just fine. And so it's 4.3 to five or 4.5, all right? So say it's 610 yards, I'm just gonna do 4.4 easy to break that in half. Now I have, if I don't have a dope card, arm board, tape, or marker to write down on my hand, now I have a simple way to navigate through that and I can quickly go target to target. 
and I can have this right down on me, right down with me on the gun, boom, impact, change it, boom. If I really wanted to get fast, because actually I should do a video of that, just screwing around. One hand on here, one hand on the gun and going. Uh, but that's how I utilize this to the most advantage if I am just gonna use this for shooting. Something quick, easy, and able to engage targets. When you start getting up those higher distances, and I, you know, I use this mainly like that for like uh, effective engagement distances, which typically is like 600 and in, but someone told me once, and they were quoting someone else, that you measure long range per cartridge by time of flight, and one second beyond that is uh, long range. So for my BCM 556 at 4,800 foot altitude, I am only at long range at 1,020 yards based off of that philosophy. So whoever said that, I don't know. Do I agree with it? Do I not agree with it? I don't really care. What I think of it as is a good metric to measure things against. Um, so it's because if I said 22 long rifle, long range could be 120 yards, right? So well, depending on which one you're shooting. So that is how I use this to its most effective really, really fast, okay? The other thing is, Besides that, I wanna know my accuracy first. I went over this in a previous video, but I wanna get, okay, quick win, four mile an hour, speed drop, 1.8 is what it's gonna be. Uh, calculate 1.8. So now I have a four mile an hour gun, 1.8. What does that mean? Absolute best thing about this is, it gives me one way to read the wind, which by the way, to give a pseudo quick couple line sentence of a wind class, the wind, shooting in wind is good. It's a fun thing to do. Don't look at it like, ah, the wind's gonna make me miss. It's really hard, blah, blah, blah. The, there's a couple tricks to it. One, don't worry about hitting your target. Worry about finding the wind. You wanna shoot into the known. And in order to do that, you gotta know what the wind is because you know what your round does without it. So if you know that you have a four mile an hour wind at 400 yards and you have a four mile an hour gun, your round is going to be 0.4. So then if it goes, say you shoot and it's 0.8, you can expect that wind to be a an eight mile an hour wind, right? So now you got a quick way to uh, math that out in your head, which is really simple, super simple math once you understand it. And I did a video before on a uh, on how to do these gun numbers in quick wind. Now for speed drop, so if you look at wind as windage horizontal, now speed drop is your vertical, right? So I can say at whatever distance I'm engaging, say it's I have a speed drop number of 1.8 mils. I'm gonna turn that to 18 say my range is 400 yards, all right? 18, all right, 400 becomes 40. So I'm just gonna simply do, cut that in half, it's gonna be 200 or 20. So I'm gonna take that and it's actually going to be a, roughly a two mil hold, okay? Easy, boom, hit the target. Um, this is with a variance of error of 0.2 and I can change that variance of error between 0.2 and 0.1. But that'll make it really simple to not only read your wind, but also know your elevation. Those two numbers are super essential. They're super essential, especially if you have multiple shooters and you're trying to work fast um, if you don't have an arm board. All you need is distance, and if you don't have dope, you can quickly do it with that. Um, here's the trick. You got to do it a lot, all right? And you don't have to shoot to do it. You can go in here. You know, let me set this up. What I will do is I'm gonna set my winds down to zero and at six o'clock. So I'm gonna zero out my wind, all right? And I'm gonna zero out my degree of fire because it really doesn't number. This is a, a head game. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit generate here. This number is gonna generate from one to 4.0 and that's gonna be my windage, okay? And this is gonna help me figure out what my, um, to get better in the head. So I'm gonna hold, what is it? My, I do it within my speed drop distance. So my speed drop is out to 622 yards, all right? Um, because I want to be effective. Now I'm gonna hold it down at some random distance, whatever it is, and hold it. And uh, so I'm gonna hold this, cover that. So at 533 yards, so I don't want to see the answer. At 533 yards, if I shoot and it ends up being a 3.9 mils, doesn't matter, I'll pick a direction, left or right. Let's say 3.9 mils right. At 533 yards. I'm gonna make that simply a 500 yards. I'm gonna make this simple in my head. So I know at four mile an hour gun at 500 yards is going to be um, a 0.5 in a four mile an hour wind. But I went 3.9. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 
40, so seven. Let's go four times seven. What is that? All right, 14, 28. So I probably have a 28 mile an hour wind. So now I'm going to set my wind speed. I went left to right, I believe. Set this up. Nine mile an hour wind. Uh, what did I say, 28? 14, yeah, 28 mile an hour wind. Let's see how close I was. Four point, I was a little over. Shot it a little over. Again, it is a 3.6, technically, mile an hour gun. Um, but you know what? 0.4, I'm going to give it to myself. That's pretty excellent. So that uh, that's going to help me get faster at doing it. Guys, I cannot tell you how bad I am at math, all right? I struggled all through school with math. Even into college, I struggle so bad. I would, for several months, I did this every night before going to bed. I haven't done it for quite a while. I'd probably say like six months. But this is how I would do it to get myself faster at it. So I'm going to hold this down for a random distance again. All right, I'm going to boom, and I'm cover that up. 399 yards, 400 yards. All right, I'm going to hit this for my wind. Let's say 2.6 mils left. All right, so 2.6, four mile an hour gun at 400 yards. That's going to be 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24. Let's go, so let's, uh, 24, 2.4. Now four times six. Yeah, it's going to be 24. It's going to be 2.6. 26 mile an hour wind. Uh, let's go 25 mile an hour wind, okay? I'm going to give myself a 25 mile an hour wind. All right, let's go ahead and set that real quick. Ah, within 0.1, okay? Pretty close, right? And at four, because it's four mile an hour gun, at 400 yards, it's really simple to get there. Um, I probably could have just said 26. Let's go ahead and give that, put it where it does. 2.8, so it's 25, 24, there you go. So 24 mile an hour wind, boom. There he goes, easy. So now you're getting the practice of reading your wind by your shot without ever having to shoot, okay? So I'm gonna do this one more time because I'm stretching the limits of my brain right now. Let's crank it back up. All right, five, th uh, I already did one similar to this earlier. Um, let's crank it back down somewhere. All right, Oop, cover that up. All right, 481 yards, random number generator, 2.5. 481, I'm just going to round to five. Uh, five times five is 25, so five times four for my um, wind speeds, right? It's going to be 20, so let's say it's a 20 mile an hour wind. Oop, go to wind. 2.8, uh, so it's a little slower because 3.6, right? Let's go 18. All right, there we go. So it's close enough to get there. Depending on target size, I'm more than hitting the target, okay? Um, especially at that, inside that 500 yards, yeah. So that is how I practice my wind speed and left and right really quickly. And the thing is, it's just like a video game. You sit here and you practice it back and forth over and over. You're working your mind. Um, you get really used to it. The next thing to do is obviously shoot and do it live. Okay. Um, but trying to keep those things, you need to know your w w gun numbers and the how to do that really, really easily. Um, in the, I did a video on gun numbers, how to, and what I went through and did is I showed it in like a multiplication table. It's really simple. 4, 8, 12, 5, 10, 15, 6, 12, um, 18, 20, all that, 24, ah, going on and on, okay? Here's a really simple way to do it. Knock it out, learn it, and with that, if you have the Kestrel, um, you can then utilize this to shoot with no wind, no wind call target or shots, wind call shots. So you can really dial it in different drills you can do, but that's how I use this thing to get faster and more efficient. Um, the biggest help this has ever done for me is when I set out to use it for myself. I was training for a championship match. I had no time to go train. So what I did is I went through this. I had this sitting in the bathroom and every time I was in there, doing what kings do, I uh, I went through this and it, I put myself into mental preparation stage by stage and I had so much progress, so much more success at that following match just from mentally preparing by doing that multiple times a day, okay? So 
That's how you can utilize the Kestrel to your advantage. Again, this is the fourth video on how to use this Kestrel. The third one's pretty short. The other two go through everything and how to do it. Um, I probably misspoke in some of them, but that is what it is. This is a very essential tool for you guys to use, so make sure you're using it. And if you have any questions, um, put them down in the comments. Let them know if I got anything wrong. I'm human. It's more than likely that I'm gonna Ooh, see, I spit. It's more than likely I'm gonna get something slightly wrong or simply forget. Um, again, I'm making four videos for while I'm gone. So that's it for this class. That is, you know, what we went over for this class is awesome to know. It's everything you should know. Um, just make sure that you're constantly updating it, constantly playing with this. Play with this as much as you play with your phone, okay? A lot of times you're gonna get more use doom scrolling your Kestrel than you will doom scrolling my Instagram, which you should definitely be on because it's awesome, all right? this is going to make you an extreme success. If you go through and you learn everything in this, in a Kestrel, that is going to teach you everything you know about, uh, everything you need to know about the ballistics of shooting and all the, the words you need to know, all the definitions. Then after that, it's just how to actually index the gun, how to manipulate and control the gun, and then obviously how to set it up. But this is essential. Even if you're just using a carbine, a fighting carbine, red dot, any of that, treat them all like a precision gun and do the work on them because you're going to be able to utilize them so much more efficiently, so much more lethally and uh, consistently too. So that's what I got for you. You get out and bang. Quick mental health note, get outside, do what you need to do. Go for a walk, touch the grass. That's all I got. Get out and bang.